Hey everyone, welcome again. Today we are going to start a new act that is Limitation Act 1963. So, friends, stay tuned with me in this series of videos whereby we will deal with this act in a comprehensive manner. So, today we are going to get a brief description about the act and the purpose and the structure of that. So, let's start. First of all, we must know about the commencement of the act and date of its enforcement. So, this act came into force on 1st of January 1964 and it got presidential assent on 5th of October 1963. This act is based on the Third Law Commission. So friends, what is the purpose of creating the act? We all know every person has some rights and a corresponding remedy to it. Because we know that there is a popular maxim, ubi just ibi rebidium, that is, where there is a right, there is a remedy. But we must understand that this remedy cannot exist for infinity. One must approach the court within a reasonable period of time to seek his remedy and get redressal from the court. If a person does not approach the court, then other party could presume that he is slipping over his rights and is no more interested in it. Therefore, the legislation introduced this act so that we could provide certainty to the rights of people and establish peace in the public. The purpose of the act, therefore, can be confined to two maxims that are interest republicae ut sit finish latium that is it is the interest of the society that a period be put to the litigation second vigilantibus non dormantibus that is law assist those who are vigilant on their right not to those who sleep over their rights therefore the purpose of the act is only to provide remedy to those who are with good causes and approach the court within a reasonable period of time that is defined by the statute. If a person approaches beyond that, then his remedy is dismissed. So let's start with the act. First we have short title, extent and commencement. This act may be the called uh, may be called the Limitation Act 1963. It extends to whole of India and it shall came into force on such date as the central government may by notification in the official gadget appoint. So we all know this. We need not to understand short title, extent and commencement. Next we have definition. In this section 2 we have definition part and in this definition part we must know the clause in which the important definitions are stated. First of all, we have applicant under, under clause A. So it is easy to uh, learn it. That is A for applicant. So A in clause A, we have applicant. Applicant includes a petitioner. Second, any person from or through whom an applicant derives his right to apply. Third, any person whose estate is represented by the applicant as executor, administrator or other representative. So let's take example. For example, a person is deceased and his legal representatives are pursuing remedy on his behalf. So can we say that such person is an applicant under a limitation act? So yes, and such person is applicant according to clause 2 that is any person from or through whom an applicant derives his right to apply. So here the applicant that is legal representative is deriving his right to uh, apply from the deceased person. So along with the legal representative deceased person is also the applicant here. So these are a kind of presumed applicants. Okay. Next we have an important definition that is of defendant. And friends, it is also easy to remember. See, in defendant, we have the maximum number of vowels, that is E. So, E for defendant. So, defendant includes any person from or through whom a defendant derives his right liability to be sued. And second, any person whose estate is represented by the defendant as executor, administrator or other representative. So, the example 
ऊपर वाले डेफिनेशन में लिया था वही सेम एग्जाम्पल अगर हम इसमें अप्लाई करेंगे तो हम इजीली समझ पाएंगे नेक्स्ट वी हैव ईजमेंट इंक्लूड्स अ राइट ईजमेंट इंक्लूड्स अ राइट नॉट अराइजिंग फ्रॉम कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बाय विच वन पर्सन इज एंटाइटल टू रिमूव एंड अप्रोप्रिएट फॉर इज ओन प्रॉफिट एनी पार्ट ऑफ द सॉयल बिलोंगिंग टू अनदर और एनी थिंग ग्रोइंग इन और अटैच टू और सब्सिस्टिंग अपॉन द लैंड ऑफ अनदर सो बेसिकली लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड इट विद एज एन विद एन एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ़ यू आर लिविंग इन अ हाउस एंड एंड बिसाइड्स इट्स देर इज अ प्लॉट एंड यू वॉन्ट दैट ओल द फ्रेश एयर लाइट एंड ईजी वेंटिलेशन कुड बी यूज बाई यू सो इफ यू ओपन इफ यू आर यूजिंग दैट ईजमेंट फ्रॉम दैट प्लॉट दैन दिस इज योर राइट एंड दिस राइट यू आर गेनिंग फ्रॉम सॉयल बिलोंगिंग टू अनदर पर्सन ओके सो बेसिकली ईजमेंट इज एनी थिंग दैट यू यूज टू इंजॉय ओके एंड दैट थिंग विच इज़ बींग इंजॉयड बाई यू डज नॉट बिलोंग टू यू इट इज़ एनी पार्ट ऑफ द सॉयल बिलोंगिंग टू अनदर पर्सन सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द ईजमेंट नेक्स्ट मूव ऑन टू अनदर डेफिनेशन दैट इज गुड फेथ नथिंग शैल बी डन नथिंग शैल बी डीम टू बी डन इन गुड फेथ विच इज़ नॉट डन विद ड्यू केयर एंड क्वेश्चन आई होप यू ऑल रिमेंबर दैट वी हैव स्टडीड दिस डेफिनेशन इन इंडियन पीनल कोड दैट इज अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टी टू सो द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू डेफिनेशन इज दैट अंडर इंडियन पीनल कोड इट इज़ रिटर्न नथिंग शैल बी डीम टू बी डन और बिलीव टू बी डन इन गुड फेथ विच इज़ नॉट डन विद ड्यू केयर एंड अटेंशन ओनली डिफरेंस इज दैट नेक्स्ट वी हैव प्लेटिव एंड फ्रेंड्स हाउ टू रिमेंबर इट सी इन प्लेटिव वी हैव मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ वॉल्स दैट इज आई सो आई फॉर प्लेटिव सो प्लेटिव इंक्लूड्स एनी पर्सन फ्रॉम और थ्रू होम ए प्लेटिव ड्राइव राइट टू सू सेकेंड एनी पर्सन हुज A state is represented by the plaintiff as executor, administrator, or other representative. Next, we have the most important definition that is period of limitation and prescribed period. The whole concept of limitation act is based on these two definitions, that is, period of limitation and prescribed period. So, what is period of limitation? before reading this definition i would like to tell you that period of limitations are stated under the act itself here see these are the limitations of various suits whereby we must know the important limit periods of limitations see in this schedule the whole limitation act is divided into three parts that is suits first division applic then application then appeal so in these divisions we have 10 parts for example for first part deals with suits relating to accounts second part deals with suit relating to contracts so like this we have 10 parts and three divisions three divisions belongs to suits appeals and applications so the purpose of this schedule is to let you know about the period of limitations for various types of suit for example if a suit is against a factor for an account then period of limitation is 3 years and the time from which period begins to run is stated here so you no need you need not to remember all these periods of limitations theek okay? hai only we will remember the important one so let's move back so what is period of limitation the period which is which is stated in the schedule itself is the period of limitation and what is prescribed period the period which is calculated by you after removing all the exceptions exclusions which are stated in the act and the period so we so received is known as the period of is known as prescribed period 
so this is only the difference period of limitation is stated in the act itself whereas the prescribed period is calculated after all the exclusions and exceptions that are stated in the act itself next we have important definition that is suit so suit does not include an appeal or an application both these things suit appeal and application are treated distinctly in this act so when we study the section of a section of this act then we must know that whether it relates to suit only or whether it relates to suit appeal or application or any of these things so i hope you all are clear with the introduction part of this act we will continue our series and start reading the sections from the bare act only and deal it in a comprehensive manner along with the case laws wherever necessary so thank you friends stay tuned and subscribe my channel like it share it thank you